And welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Today I'm here with my good friend Koi Fresco. Hello everybody. And what we decided we would do is film a Q&A video for you guys uh, of some questions that we actually just asked you about. So on social media, on both Snapchat and Instagram, we just asked our audience uh, some questions that you guys might have. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and answer some of those questions. And we're doing a second video um, on my channel where me and Aaron talk about the law of attraction and whether or not it's actually real. Yeah, go ahead and check. I'm gonna link that up in the video below. So go ahead and check out that video by just clicking that link and uh, you'll see some of the content over there as well. So the first question we have is, does astrology impact one's life in any way? What are your guys' thoughts on astrology? Ooh. Why don't you wanna go and start this one off? Yeah, I actually, uh, I did a video on astrology once um, that was kind of divided. My, my kind of thoughts with astrology, uh, I, I try to really mix a lot of spiritual practice and scientific you know, understanding. And on a fundamental level, there's a lot of lack when it comes to astrology um, mm -hmm. from a scientific standpoint. Yeah. So, so for me, I've always said that astrology has as much impact as you allow it to have. I know? totally agree. It, it's kind of just like crystals, just like you know tarot card readings. All these, you know, a lot of these new age practices are, are they can help us and they can assist us and they can give us insight. But that all depends and is determined by how much you know you put your heart into it. You take those words totally as, as as facts versus fiction. Right. That to me is, is the biggest indicator on how much astrology is going to impact your daily life. Yeah. Is you know a lot of people have never heard of astrology around the world and you know they live perfectly functional lives. Exactly. I totally agree. As I say a lot on the channel, I believe that everything in life is fundamentally neutral, but that we tag the meaning as to what things mean. So if we use astrology as a symbol, then we can derive certain meaning from that and mean maybe even from like uh, a consciousness point of view, we've all teamed up together and yeah. been like, hey, Mercury retrograde means this and yes, all this exactly. stuff. Yeah. And we may collectively agree that this is what some of the things mean, but at the fundamental base level, I think we have the power over what we believe to be true and that it's dependent upon the meaning we give it. Yes, exactly. So it yeah. can be a powerful tool, but it's not the end all be all. Yes, it's not a necessity. It's exactly. In um, any kind of life, spiritual life, regular material life, yep. it's, it's not, you know, like I said, there are tons of people who throw astrology out the window and have completely mm -hmm. healthy, happy, enjoyable lives. And there's others who, you know, read about it and practice it every single day who have the same results. It's just comes exactly. down to where your mind is and what you're utilizing that astrology for. Totally agree. Yeah, it just really depends on the person. It depends on you. It depends on what the person believes. And there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just a powerful tool if we see the power in that. So exactly. I'd say that's the main one. So, all right, do you want to question? Ask question? Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. I like that one. I like that question. All right, here's another question that, um, so here's a good question that I got. It's one I get kind of often. How do we remain positive and spiritual, or positive or spiritual, either or, when you're stuck in a household of people that are stuck in society's system? I get that question all the time same. as well. It's the same <laughs> thing. You want me to go first on this? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so the first thing I'd say that's the most important with this is what we define the situation to be. Many times when we get into a house, we're automatically subconsciously labeling people as negative. And even if sometimes they don't do something negative, we might think and interpret things they're doing as negative when they're actually not. And maybe they really are. But the point is to know that we need to kind of like let go of the labels. I know there's been people that I've been around that did have more of what we could call a negative attitude. But what I did is I noticed that the moment I stopped focusing on that so much, it was like it kind of started to go away because I wasn't looking for it as much. Exactly. So it kind of became like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I, I'd say the most important thing to know is the most power, like the most powerful ability that you have is the ability to choose how you respond to situations. And if our definitions say that this has power over me, then it will have power over me, but it's kind of get in tune with what the definitions are. Because if we believe yeah. it has power over us, then it does but that's our choice. So yeah, I think it's all about that awareness of what you define to be positive or negative and dropping the labels as to what that is. And what I love to go off of is, you know, Alan Watts had a great way of speaking and Alan Watts would always talk about, you know, seeing life as a game. You know, that game like doesn't that. have to inherently be good or bad, it's just a game. So yep. because of that, if we are players in this game, if we are humans humaning, as he liked to say, in this experience, we have to see things as we would see it in the game, which is a challenge, right? An obstacle, right. something to overcome. So if I'm in a, in a situation where I'm at home or I'm at school or I'm somewhere where I perceive it to be a negative um, area, negative place of being, negative mind, negative energy, I need to stop seeing it as inherently negative or inherently you know, against me and start seeing it as a challenge for me to overcome. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going home to a, a negative household, <laughs> 
That negative car. Yeah, the negative noise. I can't believe that just happened. But so if I'm going home to like say I consider a negative household or I'm going to a negative school, I need to start looking at it as I would in a game, which is a challenging household or a challenging right. school. And if I can see it as a challenge, I can sit down and think about ways to overcome it. How can mm -hmm. I grow through this? How can I use this as an opportunity to learn? Because right. if I can learn to combat my thoughts in the sense of wanting this to be something against me and me just to be the pity party, mm -hmm. and I can learn to overcome it instead, and yep. me be you know, the victor in this challenge, I stop seeing my family as negative. I say, instead see myself see as yep. this powerful individual who has the ability to overcome my issues and my problems. Right. Which is what we see in successful people around the world. And yep. It's never a problem to them. It's just, okay, this is a, a roadblock. How do I get around it? Exactly. It's, it's never something that's stopping that me from That is so true. Yeah. And that, that goes for all of us. And that just that takes that little flip of the switch. And he said, you know, and I agree. If you see it as a game, it's less serious. I totally, I love that analogy yeah. because it's so true. We, we have the ability to decide what power it has over us. And if we decide we're gonna be at the cause and not the effect, then we will be. So exactly. if it's a challenge, then it's a challenge because we define it as a challenge, but a challenge is better than a problem. Yep. And we have the power to get through that challenge. So I think it's about also knowing that. And I like the way you said that. Yeah, a Thank game. You. Yeah. That's so true. Well, that's, that's such all, a good point. It's all a big game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that makes it actually kind of fun too. I remember it's I used to playful. have- It makes it all playful. It does. It, it really brings a new energy to the table. I remember my uh, I used to have a sales commission job and I used to tell people, kind of treat it as a game. Like, you know, yep. I, we help people, we get commission, but if you treat it as a game, it's so much lighter. Yes. And I find that then it's just like things smooth. It's such a smooth yeah. process. So the I mean? lighter it is, the less we overthink it and the more we can focus on how to deal with it. Right. And I like that metaphor too, because a game is fun. Yeah, exactly. Right? A game it's is fun. fun. Whereas challenges it's... are supposed to be fun. They're, they're, exactly. They're workouts for the brain and workouts yep. for the body. So yeah. seeing it as a challenge makes it something we look forward to um, eventually versus mm -hmm. just seeing it as a problem, which is something that we just dread. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I so agree. All right, next question. Okay, this is a good question. I get this every now and then. Can we manifest an awakening in someone else? Should we try or should we not try to do so? Ooh. This is a good question, that's right? A good question. I get asked this a lot too. So, um, from my, you might have a different view on this actually um, than me. From my perspective and a lot of what I follow is, is a lot of philosophy through Buddhist, Buddhism and um, Hindu philosophy. And it's called Advaita Vedanta. It's kind of non-dual philosophy. And the way they like to express it has to do with karma. Karma is kind of the causality of what's going on in life. Everything happening every moment is our karma. Um, in the case of awakening, an awakening is a product of our karma. It is our karma. The steps we take lead to awakening. Mm -hmm. But the thing with that is, and the thing with trying to awaken other people is that it's one of those things where you aren't supposed to force your will upon others. Yeah. So it's kind of like if you're a teacher in this aspect, you shouldn't be going around preaching to everybody randomly all over the place. What you're going to do is upset them, annoy them, maybe drive them farther away from the truth. Instead, what we're supposed to do is assist those who need the assistance first. Mm -hmm. Help those who are asking for help. Yeah. So if, if we are thinking about or wanting to initiate an awakening in somebody else, whether it be a family member or a friend, it should only be those who are looking for that awakening or are looking yeah. for our advice or our help. For us to try to push an awakening on somebody, it, it's a paradox. It can never happen. Mm -hmm. It's like trying to push the earth down. It's just, yeah. it, it's, it's physically impossible. It's mentally mm -hmm. impossible. It, it's you trying to create um, a non-reality. Right. And it's, it's, it's just regressive to your own progress because you're trying to, again, lead a horse to water that doesn't want to drink. It's exactly. You're trying to force the situation instead of mm -hmm. focusing the energy you do have to help someone else awaken who's already open to it. Yeah. And that's honestly, that's something I kind of went through when I first went through my awakening mm -hmm. back in 2012. I was so excited and so passionate about all of these things I was learning. And I went out and I shared it with my family. I shared it with my friends. And a lot of the people thought that like it was, they just couldn't resonate with it. And then mm -hmm. I looked like the weirdo. But this is what I realized is the best thing you can do is lead by example. Yes. Be a shining light that just is so bright that other people want to be similar mm -hmm. and you don't have to sell yourself. These videos that like we create on YouTube, mm -hmm. we're not trying to get you to believe what we're saying. Exactly. We're just sharing our perspective and if you resonate it, then that's great. But we were actually talking about this before we did this Q&A because when it comes to um, what we're sharing, we're not, we're really not selling anything. So, you know, when someone comes up to you and they're telling you what to believe, 
you naturally kind of have a rebel instinct. Like mm -hmm. I know that that's how I am. Exactly. If someone's like, do this, do this, you do this. You want to step back. I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm, you kind of feel that, you know, feel that and vibe. We see that a lot with activism. And it's why a lot of militant activism doesn't mm -hmm. work as For well. Sure. I mean, we're both vegan. So mm -hmm. being vegan, the best thing you can do is lead by example. People see yep. how healthy you are, how, how upbeat you are, how in shape you are. And, and that, that makes them curious. Yeah. When you go to, you know, restaurants and shout at people, it just makes them dislike you even more. Exactly. Because then they associate that negative yeah. emotion with the identity of being vegan. Exactly. So the best way to change or to uh, is is to change the world is to first change yourself and to just be that example. Yeah, it and creates a ripple. It's like throwing a stone in the pond. You know, those exactly. ripples eventually reach the shores. Yep. And it's just to trust the process. Trust that that ripple will yeah. reach the shore because yeah. eventually it will. Exactly. So no, never try to force an awakening on somebody else. It's just not going to happen. Allow yourself to mm -hmm. assist others who are already seeking an awakening. Yeah. To awaken first. Well that, put. That's where yeah. all your energy should go. I totally agree. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Are you, okay, your turn. Oh, I got a good one. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, all right, this is a good one. A little personal. What do you think would have happened if you never turned your life around? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, if you never had an awakening, if you never had a change, what do you think? Do I go first? Do you want me to go first? You can go first. Okay. <laughs> um, well, before I had my awakening, I, uh, I was labeled, and I labeled myself, I guess, of having ADHD. Mm -hmm. um, I was taking Adderall for that. Were you? Yeah. Damn! Small world, dude. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, taking Adderall, and then um, I, was, I was drinking a lot, I was partying a lot more. Um, I, I felt a lot of, I've always had a lot of energy. Like, that's one thing about me. Um, I've always had a lot of energy. I think that I would have channeled that into doing more activities that were further away from my path. The moment I started meditating, the first or second day of meditating, my life changed because I started to feel more different than I've ever felt before. Mm -hmm. And I became very present to the moment and it changed everything about me. I remember I went to work, people were like, you're so different than you were before. Not in a bad way, but just like yeah. something happened. And if that didn't happen, my guess is I would have gone down more of the path of partying a lot more. I wouldn't be as focused with my YouTube, you know, what I do on YouTube. Um, I would definitely be doing things that weren't as, you know, constructive. And I would be, I don't even know where I would be, to be honest with you. But I do know that because I started meditating and because I had, you know, what is called an awakening, that has led to such a different path. Like, I'm so much more disciplined now. I have such, I meditate every day right when I wake up for 20 minutes, right before I go to bed for 20 minutes. That's changed my life more than anything. And I don't even know where I would be yeah. if I was still doing that. So what about you? Totally agree. Well, um, if anybody goes to my channel, you'll see this. But uh, I actually spent a year in jail. I and, saw that. Um, I saw that. Because I, I got a DUI when I was 18. And that mm -hmm. was the same kind of situation, just partying 24-7. A whole year? A whole year. Damn. Completely lost to my ego, gone. You know, my only focus was the material world. And I didn't really even have an, that much information. Or So that would spawn the awakening? Exactly. Wow. Yeah, spawn the awakening. Um, so for me, I think I would have just continued to do what my plan was before any of this happened, which was to, you know, go to college, get a regular business degree or something, go work for my father, you know, classic story that a lot of us follow. Right. And maybe a lot of viewers understand because mm -hmm. we usually just do what our parents insist on us doing. You know, it's yeah. part of our, uh, the, the, in some sense, brainwashing we're raised with. is Conditioning. Very, yeah, the conditioning. Sure. We're expected to impress our parents by doing what they ask. Mm -hmm. So I would have continued to probably do the same thing, you know, work a regular day job, do lots of drugs, probably getting more trouble. Never yeah. discover what it feels like to dive inside, to you know, admit my emotions, to transcend my ego on some levels, to understand my faults. Mm -hmm. Those things would have all just continued to sit under the surface and we, I would have continued to repress them as we see many, many people, especially in Western right. cultures, do 24-7. For sure. Um, so I, I'm blessed to have the situation that did happen to me. You know, it, it was a, uh, an interesting and harrowing experience, but it led me to the space where I could dive within and, and self-discover and mm -hmm. that's a path that goes on forever. You know, it's, that's awesome. It's, it's a never-ending journey of... Um, education and potential enlightenment so it's isn't it hard I, I find beautiful. this it's hard to re when I think about how I used to be it is hard to relate to it that's the case it feels like, like a different life yeah it feels like it so feels different. like your past incarnation in a sense it, it does like a different oh, human. I totally resonate you know, with when that, I yeah. think when I even see older pictures of me I don't like even think it looks like me or is me it's, it's just that alien to my yeah. mind at this point mm -hmm. and it's because you know that isn't your true self I think that's why I think so yeah that you're makes aware sense. once you do start to have that awakening process and when you do start to truly wake up to to what empowers you and what really helps you help the world right and you're a more progressive person you know that what you were was nothing but a facade it was a complete facade and that's why it was it's like a so mask that we it's just halloween's mask. coming up it's exactly. like a mask you wear at halloween exactly you know? so once you realize that it's you, it's one of those things you can never go back yeah that's so true once you you can't ever go back because everything looks different <laughs> even if you want to you can't the, the, the gates have been opened yeah 
I have a question that I think both of us get sometimes, yeah. and I kind of want to answer it because I think it's the funniest question ever. Uh, sometimes people ask if I'm enlightened. Oh yeah. I think that's the funniest thing ever, and I don't mean that in a mean way. Yeah, you yeah. ask that question. But are we enlightened? What do you think? We're not enlightened. Yeah. <laughs> not I, even close. Anytime I see that, I'm like, well, no. That's, that's the paradox, too. People don't understand. Chagim Trungpa, who we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. would always say, ego, or enlightenment is the ego's biggest disappointment. Yeah. See, people think of enlightenment as some kind of, some kind of trophy, some kind of achievement. Yep. Enlightenment is just a return to our natural state, which is a place yep. beyond perception and beyond identification. That's mm -hmm. all it is. It's, it's as simple as sitting, you know what I mean? Right. A, a stone is enlightened because a stone just is a is, stone. It, it is being. It just it is. is. Mm -hmm. that, that's what enlightenment is. It's not some feeling. It's not some euphoria. People think that, you know, they have a meditative state and they have that crazy, you know, that kind of kundalini feeling and they mm -hmm. think, oh, I was an enlightened moment. It's like, no, it's just a really big body high. Yeah. You know, completely different. <laughs> so right. I, that's the paradox. As it's nice like, as it sounds yeah. and as much as, you know, my ego might, might want to be enlightened. Exactly. The ego would love to be enlightened, but that's part of spiritual practice is you transcend even that. And, and if you, no joke, I've listened to so many people talk about enlightenment, whether it be like Eckhart Tolle or mm -hmm. Osho. Osho, they all said kind of the same thing. When you, when they did become enlightened, they laughed. Yeah. They laughed hysterically because it is such a funny concept to try to attain something that you've already had from a certain perspective. That's why Osho, I believe, says that you cannot attain enlightenment. You can only realize enlightenment. enlightenment. That's the thing is you have the enlightened experience and then you come back into your, your ego, into your, yeah. your, your perspective and you go, oh my gosh, yeah. there was no me there. You know? exactly. And that's what it is. It's, it's the only experience you have on enlightenment is a reflection of it. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. And yeah. it's kind of like a dream, you know what I mean? If, unless you're lucid, but if you're just having a dream, which most people have, you're just lost in the dream. Yeah, and once you wake up, you go, oh, what a, that dream. Was a dream. That's kind of what Maybe that's what enlightenment's like, but exactly. we don't know because we're not enlightened. Yeah, and that's the paradox too, is an enlightened being can't say that they're enlightened in that moment. Exactly, yeah. because who is the enlightened person? Who yeah. is enlightened because you don't have an ego? You know, I just wanted to answer that because who I guess that- There's a saying, um, again, Alan Watts would say, who is the knower who knows that he is known? Exactly, that's the point. How far back does our identification go? How, yep. many, how many layers of Of that onion can you, can you peel back? Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, there it is, you know what I mean? So it's just kind of funny. Pretty I crazy. just wanted to <laughs> clarify that because I get that question a lot and I do not believe that I'm enlightened. I don't claim yeah, to be yeah. enlightened. Enlightened. I just think it's that's kind of the way I wanted it. We wanted to answer yeah, that. I'd say there's a very slight handful of people on earth who, who sit who, in that state at this current moment. And they probably wouldn't tell you that they're yeah, enlightened. And they're probably not teaching on YouTube or, or writing books or lecturing. They're probably past that. Yeah, I'd say a lot of them probably just do their own thing. Yeah. I mean, if I had to yeah. take a guess, but yeah. Do you that's have any other questions? Oh, let's I see. think I might have another one. How many oh, we get a lot, 20 minutes. Damn! We both talk a lot. We do talk a lot. So the final question is, can you, because we were just talking about it, can you become attached to meditation, to your practices? Can you be, I think, I think you can become attached to anything. Mm -hmm. I think you could become, even, even meditation at a certain level, I look at it sometimes because I get up every day, I meditate the first 20 minutes, yeah. and then 20 minutes before I go to bed, and sometimes I think it's a limitation because why can't this be a meditation? Why can't I meditate when I eat? What am I defining as meditation? So I think I think certain practices mm -hmm. can definitely become attachments. Definitely I think it's agree. I think the power is in just knowing oh that is an attachment, and and then switching it up. Yeah, and if you want to honor that, you can you can honor that belief. You're like I need to meditate every day, but I've realized for myself sometimes I'll push myself not to meditate right in the morning. Yeah, just to shake it up because I'm like, am I that fragile that if I don't meditate, I'm just done exactly. for the day? You know what I mean? You don't want to leach onto it as you know exactly. a requirement. Yeah, what do you think? A tool. Same thing. I agree. And and Ron Bells would often talk about this, and he would say, you know, even with things such as meditation. Uh, if the method of meditation you're using starts to become a drone, you're sitting there going, oh, meditation, you know, you're just yeah. with it. Well, switch it up. Try a new method. Try a new technique. Right. Go to a new space. Sit for longer. Sit for less. Sit in a different position. Uh -huh. Try things out so you have to re I remember how to return yourself to that space of just being. Yeah. Um, because sometimes we do get familiar. And that right. goes with everything. You know, if we're learning about a certain philosophy, we might get comfortable with it and mm -hmm. think we know everything. You know, we get confident in our practice and in our, our manifestation technique. And exactly. that can limit us. Yes. Um, so it goes with everything. You know, that's why it's always important to, you know, question yourself with everything you're doing. Yeah. Am I really getting what I need out of this? Am, am I overlooking I this? Am I ignoring what I should be focusing on because it's becoming familiar? Right. And that's when, that's all my, that's my mindfulness is so important in everyday life. Mm -hmm. It continuously keeps you on your toes which in turn allows you to perfect your methods and, and actually realize when you are or aren't fully diving into them or whether or not you're becoming a Because you bring that awareness in. Exactly. Yeah. You're always aware. 
Yeah. You, we always know on a subconscious level whether or not we're attached to something. We always know. Yeah. yeah. Whether it be drugs or our favorite food or our favorite shoes, you know, we know what we are attached to. Exactly. That's, that's where the power is. Because yeah. we do live in material society. There are things we need to do, but we are aware of why we want what we want or why we do what we want. And which aspects of what we do and what we want are things that we really are just, our, our, our emotions are tied to. Right. That's that attachment arises. Exactly. Yep. The attachment arises with feeling as well. Exactly. I think anytime we become too certain of anything, it's, it's sometimes good to bring that uncertainty in. And exactly. in that uncertainty, there's a, a space for new experiences. And I think that's always important to remember. So. And the paradox of, of, of too much certainty is that it starts to get dull. Exactly. You lose yep. that emotional, you know, that feeling, that understanding. Yeah. It becomes something we start to gloss over. Which is why I try new things. Exactly. You know, try new meditation practices. Exactly. Try different types of meditation. Yeah. You know, even if you have a, you know, a philosophy you follow, read a book that's debating it. You know, right. Re I do that yourself. sometimes. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll intentionally have something that I believe, and if it's an article that completely negates what I kind of read believe, the whole thing. I'll read it. <laughs> and a lot of times, you read it, and then you're like, whoa, like that's real interesting. All right, guys. So that. <laughs> Yeah. Camera died. Camera died, but we're back now. Um, so that's it for today's q and I want to encourage all you guys, me and Koi have a couple more videos coming out. Uh, click the link in the bio, the description box, the bio, like it's Instagram, in the description <laughs> box and check out Koi's video. We're doing an awesome video on the law of attraction. Uh, go over there and check that out. Subscribe to his channel. He's got amazing content over there as Thank well. You. And then other than that, as always, we will see you guys on the next vid. Peace, much love, and namaste. Rum rum. All right, perfect. Mm. That was good. Good to go. We did it, bruh.